People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck, report live from Bangkok, baby. Welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show. Today, yes, today, I'm going to be bringing you principle number 49, which is a heart talk. Have a heart talk. What does a heart talk mean? Well, you know what? I've been in some of the craziest business settings, whereas none of the staff members sit down and have a meeting. They're all angry at each other. Right. Emotions are building up. And the next thing you know, there's an explosion. Correct. I remember back in Vegas, there's this particular woman, whereas uh, we finally had a meeting to get a, a few things off our chest, but no one had the chance to talk. And the one who was the most angry, her lip was shaking and she's like, I can't believe it. Blah, 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 blah. And she was just an endless complaining, endless complaining. And no one, we didn't even go around the room to get everything off our chest. And so today I'm going to be trying to uh, get a point across in terms of how to have a heart talk and what can you do in terms of, I guess, developing a relationship with the same team. Because a lot of people... You know, like the, I guess you could say, like the quote, Cliff Durfee, he said, most communication resembles a ping pong game in which people are merely preparing to slam their next point across. But pausing to understand different points of view and associated feelings can turn apparent opponents into true members of the same team. See what I mean? Like, the thing is, you can actually be part of, of a team. It, it depends because, you know, other people, they're after their own pockets. They're after their own good. Uh, like, remember the Titans? You know, they had a heart talk. Uh, what was it? Oh, I forgot their names. But the white guy and the black guy. Let's just say the white guy and the black guy. They had a heart talk. He was like, you know what? Your name is Julius. My name is Gary, unless I'm mistaken. Let's just get some particulars out of the way and let's just, you know, nail this one home. So he actually talked about Uh, You have so much talent, but you're not working on the same team, yada, yada, yada. But Julius also actually was able to get his point across. He was like, you know what? One of your white buddies is not blocking for uh, Rev, who was the quarterback of the team. And he said, what team? What team do we have here? He's like, no, I'm going to get mine, and that's it. And then Gary said, you know what? That's the worst attitude I've ever heard. And Julius said, attitude reflects leadership. And guess what? They ended up doing a two or three a day. And nightfall came around, and what happened is that Gary actually went after one of his own players, one of the white players, and he said, what are you doing, Rev? I mean, not what are you doing, uh, uh, Jerry, was it Jerry? I forgot his name. But he said, what are you doing? That's not blocking. He got right in his face, pushed him, and said, if you don't block, I'm going to hit you so hard that, you know, uh, you're going to need a new haircut or something like that. It's like a funny joke. And Julius ended up seeing that. The African-American player ended up seeing that. And so the very next play, he hit him, hit him real hard, just stuck him. And the next, you know, uh, Gary went up to Julius, the white guy, went up to the black guy and said, you really stuck him, Campbell. And he said, yeah, I like me a little bit of contact. And so Gary pushed him and said left side. And then Julius like stood there shocked for about three, three to five seconds. And then after that, Julius pushed him and said strong side. This is when the team the birth of the team took place because all the other team members were looking up to these two particular individuals on both sides of the spectrum, both being black and white. And when they actually did this, everything changed. The whole persona of the team changed because they had that heart talk. They had that heart talk and about leadership. Very, very critical. Very, very critical because You know, a lot of people, they just, they're not able to get stuff that's bothering them off their chest. And what ultimately ends up happening is that an explosion happens. So I recommend, you know, especially at, you know, whatever, it depends on what job you have and where you work and stuff. I recommend having a probably about at least a heart talk a month. And I'm going to show you how to conduct and what is this heart talk about. So let's talk about this heart talk. Jack Canfield says, it's, a stru- it's like a structured communication process in which you have eight agreements and there are they're a strict they're strictly abide by. Okay? It creates a safe environment for a deep level of communication to occur without the fear of condemnation, okay, advice, interruption, or being rushed. It's a powerful tool used to surface and release any unexpressed emotions that could otherwise get in the way 
of people being totally present to deal with the business at hand. It can be used at home, in business, in the classroom, sports teams, anywhere. Okay, people? So, hard talks are useful before or during a staff meeting, at the beginning of a business meeting where two groups of people are coming together for the first time. It's crazy because my one of my ex-students who works at a huge company, she sent me a message saying, hey, I got two members of my staff, they're quarreling, meaning they're arguing, uh, what can I do? And it's amazing because she sent me that message ex- at the exact time that I was reading this particular principle. It's just amazing how everything just came together. You gotta love the universe, baby. You gotta love it. Anyways, let's get back to uh, what other heart talks, they're, you know, what they're useful for. After an emotionally stimulating event like a merger, a massive layoff, a death, major athletic loss, an unexpected financial setback, or even the September 11th terrorist attacks, or you can even talk about the, uh, the tsunami in Japan, tsunami in Indonesia, you name it, anything that just went completely crazy, a big change in society on a regular basis, in the office, in a classroom, it creates a deeper level of communication and intimacy. So I'm going to tell you how to conduct this hard talk. It can be conducted with any size or group, probably between about two and ten people, all right? Uh, you'll want to break a group larger than ten into several small small groups because then that'll just take so much, you know, take up so much time. Uh, the first time you conduct it is you start by explaining that there is a value in occasionally using a structure for communication that guarantees a deeper level of listening. The structure of a heart talk creates a safe, non-judgmental space that supports the constructive rather than the destructive. Expression of feelings that, if left unexpressed, can block teamwork, synergy, creativity, innovation, intuition, which are vital for any, you know, productivity and success of any venture. Especially if you have your own personal business and there's some friction going on. This is extremely vital, okay? Now, this is completely different from a mastermind group. That's when you're exchanging ideas, yada, yada, yada. But this, having a heart talk, each person gets to talk individually about what is happening okay so start by asking people to sit in a circle then introduce the basic agreements only the person okay number one only the person holding the heart is allowed to talk so you're gonna cut out a little heart hell you could buy one if you want to make it more sexy but cut out a little heart or print out a little heart whatever it is you want to do if you want to just draw a heart on a piece of paper good pass that heart around And whoever is holding that heart is the only one that speaks. You don't judge or criticize what anyone else has said. You pass the heart object to the left after your turn or say, I pass if you have nothing to say. You talk only about how you feel, not about what other people have said, about what you feel. You keep the information that is shared within this heart talk confidential. You don't leave the heart talk unless it's declared complete, okay? So what you're going to do, you're going to keep passing this little heart or object around the circle. Well, you know, if you want to put a heart, you can put a heart. If you want to use a highlighter, by all means. But God damn it, it's not a heart. You want to pass this around multiple times to ensure all participants have more than one opportunity to share. If you have plenty of time, a heart talk completes naturally. When the heart makes a complete circle without anyone having something to say. Ask the group to agree to the guidelines that you have just stated. Which are very important to make sure that the talk does not deteriorate and lose its value. Because no one is supposed to talk except for the person holding the object. It is often best to wait until the completion of the talk to remind people about certain agreements that need more attention. Another option is to have the agreements written down on paper or a whiteboard and to merely, I guess, point to what somebody is actually, uh, point to it uh, if someone decides to, I guess, breach the agreement, one of the, what, one of the agreements that I just stated. So, set a time frame, 15 to, 10, uh, 15 to 30 minutes, nothing longer than an hour, and keep going around the group until the time runs out or nobody has anything more to say. You can use anything. Like I said, guys, you can use a ball, paper, uh, paperweight, a book, 
uh, anything that can be seen by the others, part, you know, the other tar uh, participants, okay? So, what can you expect from the results of this? Now, you guys are probably saying, okay, so, yeah, I'll do this heart talk, but what can I expect? Well, you can expect enhanced listening skills from a lot of your, uh, I guess you could say your team or whoever you work with. Constructive expression of feelings rather than destructive. I've seen, I've been to a lot of meetings and I've seen destructive behavior. And I remember sitting in one meeting for an hour to an hour and a half and we did not get any points across. We didn't do anything because, well, we were just jumping all over the place. No one was coming up with solutions. It was more than complaints. But the thing is, we kept going after other people's opinions uh, rather than just saying how we felt. And nothing got across. You need to improve the conflict resolution skills. That's what the other thing, the other benefit from this heart talk will give you. It improves resolution skills. You know, you need to come up with the resolution. I don't want to hear just wham, 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 wham. No, I want resolutions. And it improves your ability to let go of the resent resentments and the old issues. So, okay, the past, over the past year... You have uh, been mistreated by some of your staff and da-da-da-da-da. Okay, <clears throat> let's go of that right now. Let's go of it. Just let go of it. And then you could come up with the old, you know, go, let go of the old issues. Complete the past like I've already told you guys. And then you could develop a mutual respect and understanding from one, you know, within one another. A greater sense of connection, unity, and bonding. You know, it's crazy. One of the most valuable uses of the heart, uh, the heart talk for Jack Canfield was in a week-long training that he con conducted with 120 school administrators in Norway. And so what happened, it was during lunch break that they found out that one of the people for this uh, particular heart talk had died. Had died in a car crash during this hour. So... Through, you know, when they got back to lunch, they were just shocked and some people were crying, everything. And it's really coincidental how this happened during the lunch break, too. So the groups talked and cried for about an hour. People talked about their grief, their own sense of mortality, how precious the fleeting life really is, how scary life can be sometimes, and how you can live in the moment because your future is never guaranteed. They then took another short break and they were able to proceed with the scheduled activities. Whatever emotions there were had been expressed and heard. It was it was crazy because right after that, the, after after everything was done, they were more fo they were focused on what Jack Canfield was there to teach them. It's amazing. You know, it's crazy. A heart talk, family business. You know, <clears throat> this is a very very interesting story because this pertained to my life so much. Just because, well, we've never had heart talks in my family, and if we did, I think we could have. Uh, we could, I could have hit a point across a long time ago with my brother. There wouldn't have been so much friction. See, you know what's crazy? Uh, the year before I came to even Thailand, I felt so much friction, so much anger, so much everything from everyone. I mean, including my mom, because my mom was like, oh, you went to Sedona, Arizona for a three-day holiday. You went to hawaii for four days and you don't care about uh giving me much see the thing that's when you need to have heart talks you be like excuse me i've given this amount uh and this much and this and that it, it allows you to express all your feelings because guess what when the explosion happens like it does many of times with my family there's just fighting there's just anger there's nothing this is exactly what happened to this particular family business there were two guys that just hated each other so much and they realized that the mother and the father, you know, the mother said, man, if we don't get this together, they had a heart talk. They had a heart talk. Right. And so the, the I guess around the family meal, around dinner time, uh, this particular guy named James, James started by getting everyone to agree to the eight rules of the structured talk. Right. And then the second time around, they exp started expressing anger and hostility. These two particular brothers that wanted more and the other one was jealous of the other kind of like the situation with my brother. Right. Uh, it surfaced, and yet it was clear that no one was going to violate the guidelines by stomping out of the room or throwing something or just lunging at one another. And then it, he said, this particular person, this family business, he said it wasn't an easy talk because there were times that I guess he could tell that everyone would prefer any other activity, even if they were doing dishes. But as the heart 
talk kept going around.